Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna show you how to bevel pipe without a beveling machine. If you're new here, I'm Austin Ross, a pipeline welder for seven years, and here on this channel I like to share tips and tricks for rig welders, pipeliners, and the pipeline lifestyle. If those are videos that you're interested in, make sure and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. If you're new to the industry or wanting to get into it and you don't have your tools yet to put together a rig truck, I've made a list of essential tools needed to get started as a rig welder. You can find it in the description, there's a link. All you gotta do is punch in your name and email and I'll send it over to you. All right, so there's a lot of reasons to know how to bevel pipe without a beveling machine. Not only is it gonna help you practice whenever you're just getting started, beveling machines are expensive. You don't wanna necessarily buy one until you need one, right? So, but you wanna practice. You need to practice welding pipes so you can get out there on the job, start making money, and then purchase your tools. So that's one reason is just to start practicing on your pipe welding. Another reason is it's gonna help you on facing the pipe in the future, like out on the job. It's gonna help you when you have to cut down fittings. We can talk about that in another video. But out on the pipeline, a lot of times they send us out segmentable fittings and it starts out being a 90, but we need a 60 degree fitting or a you know an odd angle like a 57 or, or whatever. You gotta cut it down and you can do it by hand. You can back bevel it by hand, put a bevel back on it by hand, or you can use a bevel machine. But either way, it's gonna help you with being familiar with how to square pipe and how to how to bevel it with keeping a square end and things like that. So it's super beneficial to know how to do this right here. Not to mention prepping your pups for test day. That's another thing that this is really good to know. If you know how to put a bevel on and still keep a square end, that's gonna help you whenever you show up on test day and they've already got your pups cut or even if you have to cut them, but you use a bevel machine to cut it, but if the bevel machine's unsquare, you need to know how to square that end back up and this is gonna help you do that. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so there's two different ways. You can either use a grinder to put a bevel on or a torch. If you're just practicing, I always suggest looking for smaller pipe. The best thing that I can come up with as far as, you know, the average person looking for pipe to practice on is a scrap yard. You might check a scrap yard, see if you can find some pipe in a scrap yard. You can find pipe to practice on like, like at a steel supply. Definitely look for like structural pipe though. Don't look for tested pipe. Your tested pipe is going to be way more expensive. Um, or if you come across a yard, you know, where, you know, a pipeline yard or, or anything. I mean, just think metal and metal supply and like oil filled yards or stores or, or whatever and just try to find cheap pipe to practice on because pipe's really expensive, especially tested pipe. So anyway, when it comes to finding pipe to practice on, look for smaller pipe like four inch, three and four inch, six, eight inch, stuff like that. And a little bit thinner than this. This here is 375 wall. This is good practice pipe, but it's not so easy to put a, a bevel on just cause it's thicker. I mean, you, use, you can use a torch and I'll show you how to do that here. But if I was looking, in fact, I did this whenever I was practicing welding pipe before I ever got on the pipeline, I put bevels on before I ever knew what a bevel machine was. I was doing some work for Roustabout Company and uh, that's all I knew how to do. It was three inch. I had to use a grinder and that's the only thing I knew how to do, you know. But anyway, whether you're using a torch or a grinder, the first thing you want to look for is you want to make sure you're square on the end. So a two foot level or whatever size of pipe you have, but a two foot level to make sure it's square on the end. Obviously, if it's not square, you want to take your wrap around, get a wrap around that's big enough to go all the way around your piece of pipe and go ahead and make sure it's square. You can do this two ways. One way is to overlap it about six or eight inches and make sure that these are square. That's how you know, you know, you want to pull it tight and uh, make sure they're square. Or you can do this number right here. Some people say it's a lot more square this way, but either way, you're lining up these right here and that's how you know the rest of it is square. So two different ways. But the whole idea of pipe wrap is just to make sure that it's snug all the way around. There ain't no bubbles in it or anything. I'm gonna do this for the sake of this video. And depending on the thickness of pipe, the average bevel is either, like on a factory piece of pipe, is either, I think it's considered a 60, 60 or 30. It's a good thing you don't have to be good at math to be a welder, but it's either 60 or 30 is what it's considered. But as far as when you're just practicing, I wouldn't worry too much about that. But whatever you do, don't do what I just did. I would actually take a tape measure. I just eyeballed it, but take a tape measure and measure back a quarter inch or a tri-square and make four marks all the way around. 
and then line your pipe wrap up. That way, if the end of your pipe is square and, and your pipe wrap is touching each one of those marks, it eliminates all your guesswork. All right, so here's what we got. Just a reference line. Just that way you, you're laying it back the exact amount all the way around. The last thing you want to do is to not put this mark. I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but um, and it be all wavy because that's going to cause in the end it's going to cause your cap to be all wavy you know so it just it affects your cap more than anything if you don't put this reference line but not a big deal but that's just what i like to do to make it as precise as possible without a beveling machine so the next thing you want to do is make sure the inside of your pipe is clean of any of this slag right here It's important to do that because you're gonna end up leaving this part, as long as this is square and a clean, a clean cut, you can literally leave this inside as you're landing and not have to put a landing on it. It's just faster that way. Or you can get it all the way sharp and then put your landing on. But I always just left, you know, this. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. But So we'll do a grinder first before the torch. Uh, you can either use a, a grinding disc or a sanding pad. A uh, sanding pad, a brand new sanding pad seems to work better than a grinder, I mean believe it or not, or at least in my experience. But if you do use a, a grinding disc, you can use a, a quarter inch disc or one eighth because this is what you're going to have 90% of the time on pipeline work is one eighth. Make sure you're using the right disc. If you haven't seen the video we did about grinding discs, we'll put a link in the description so you can check it out or suggest a video. Make sure you're using the proper grinding disc. Some of these grinding discs ain't made to be used right here, especially the 1 8 discs. But this one is, it's made for 45 and 90 degrees. So I like to use this part of the grinder. You can use this part. That's what a lot of people tend to do is do this number right here. But I like to use this. That's just how an old man showed me uh, years ago before I started pipelining and it just works better and it makes it all clean so we'll go ahead and I'll just show you a little bit right here with the grind disc and the sanding pad. Okay, so that right there, you can see my landing's a little heavy right here. That right there is with a 1 8 grinding disc and just not even a quarter. A quarter would be way down here. So like this much on a piece of 12 inch 375 wall took me roughly four minutes just with a grinding disc. But do you see how, for one, whenever you're running the grinding disc like this, it seems like you keep the, you're steadily changing your angle. So that's one of the reasons why I like using this part of the disc versus like the edge. But also it just looks more clean, you know? That's what I like about it. But that was with the grinding disc. It took me four minutes. So I'm guessing, say five minutes, five or six minutes, six times four. That's gonna take you about 30 minutes, I would say, to bevel this by hand with the grinding disc. Now we'll go ahead and try the sanding pad. All right, the sanding pad took me about two minutes. So that was a brand new sanding pad, 12 inch, 375 wall, quarter of it took me about two minutes. So I would venture to say as long as you have a brand new sanding pad, works better than a grinding disc, which is usually the case, but a, I mean a used grind disc will not cut like that usually. But all right, so now let's use the torch for the next quarter.
So that's what the torch cut looks like. See how I tried to leave a landing? This flat part on the end is called your landing. Of course I left a little thicker because I was going to come back with a sanding pad. Um, but that took, uh, I don't know, I feel like it took longer. I didn't really time it, but I felt like it took longer than the sanding pad. About, maybe about the same amount of time, but I'm still having to put a sanding pad on it. But like if you had thicker pipe, it would be worth, you know, if you had like 500 wall or better, it would be worth using a torch. So, and all that does is just, again, causes you to practice with your hand torch, which is real good for fabrication, being a pipe liner or a structural welder. Either way, you know, just doing structural stuff. Well, there you have it. There are essentially three different ways, two different ways to bevel pipe without a beveling machine. And the reason I like to leave that landing instead of sharpen it and then put the landing is because if you made sure it was square beforehand, it should still be square in the end, which is what we have here. So that's good news. As I was grinding this, it reminded me that it's super helpful for the branch too. For those of you that aren't familiar with the with the branch, you have to bevel your your piece that you that you're that you're fitting. Once you get it fitting, you got to you got to put a bevel on it, and that's essentially exactly what I did here. You know, without the ears and the throats. But so super helpful thing to know how to do for your pipeline career, welding career in general, just fabricating, just knowing how to run your grinder and fit stuff. Not only your branch, but your test pups. Like I said at the beginning, beginning of this video, whether you're fitting up bigger pipe or 12 inch, you always clean them up. You know, you, you, you sand the bevel smooth if it needs it, put a landing on it. Uh, Cause if it's a bevel cut, it won't have a landing on it. But you always put them together first, whether it's like this or setting down like this. You always look at your space all the way around and sometimes you'll have a wide spot and you want to you want it to be blacked out all the way around so if you're testing on bigger pipe and it's not blacked out all the way around you want to mark it just like you would the branch and lay back put a heavy landing on the spots that we're touching and then lay that back to the to the wide spots i hope that makes sense all, all i'm saying is whenever you're fitting up a piece of test pipe you want to make sure it's blacked out all the way around because that is just your what your space is going to be all the way around. And that's why I talk about the prep. It's all in the prep. So anyway, super helpful thing to know how to do. And uh, not to mention you can practice at home without a bellowing machine now. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any other videos that you would like me to do referring to prepping pipe and whatnot. Uh, I've got tons of ideas, but let me know if this sparked any any interest. And let me know if you have any tips. Share it with everybody in the comments. My advice for the week is prep is everything. I, I've talked about it throughout this video a little bit, but prep is everything. It all starts with the prep. Whenever you're nervous on test day, try to be patient and focus on the prep. Do not focus on being in a hurry. Focus on your prep. If you're calm and collective on test day and you're focusing on getting the best fit that you can, that's going to make the welding go that much easier therefore relieve a lot of stress so my tip is remember that it's all in the prep so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video we will see you next week thank you for watching and remember learn something every day